Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Discover with me, Soraya. This week, we are in Liverpool, where we'll be taking you back in time to the Victorian period, where we'll be discovering one of Britain's first mosques established by Abdullah Quilliam. minded and very brave in very difficult times to be like that. I think he was someone who worked tirelessly to give back to his community, both the, the, the poor and the needy, and those who were well established and uh, sort of intellectual and uh, quite wealthy as well. So he really reached out to, to all sorts of people in the community, worked very hard on their behalf. Born in 1856, William Henry Quilliam was the son of a wealthy watchmaker and became a solicitor after training at the Liverpool Institute. He was a wonderful grandfather, he loved children and he used to come to the house at Christmas and he used to bring fabulous presents and our eyes used to pop out because he was a very generous man and he just sort of had a, a very, very special appearance. He used to always wear a frock coat with an astrakhan collar mm -hmm. and he used to have long hair over his astrakhan collar and he always wore tails and striped trousers and that was his permanent uniform. That's how he always dressed. He was what is, was known in those days as a poor man solicitor. In other words, in his practice it, and in Liverpool where he had his big practice, they used to have what they called in Liverpool Mary Ellens, who were the flower women that used to sell flowers in the street. And uh, they all had daughters that had illegitimate children. <laughs> and they used to go to my grandfather to get paternity orders to make the father pay for these illegitimate children. When he used to go through the streets, the flower women used to throw their flowers under his carriage out of, out of gratitude because he never charged them. They used to come to him and they used to say, will you take a paternity order for my daughter? And they used to say to him, we haven't got any money. And my grandfather said, well, what have you got? And they'd hold their hand out and there'd be a shilling in the middle of their palm. Mm. And he'd say, no, you keep that, but I'll take your case. <laughs> But life as a lawyer took its toll on Quilliam, and in 1882 he travelled to Morocco and Algeria, and it was there that his fascination with Islam began. At the age of 31, he reverted to Islam and took the name Abdullah. Returning to Liverpool, Abdullah began to spread Islam among the masses as Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam. And it was then that he really engaged with the British white community in Liverpool and brought them to the faith as well. Uh, he was able to explain and express Islam in terms that they understood um, that was important to them in terms of their own culture, their own principles, their own values. Abdullah Quilliam was a foresighted individual that engaged with his community regardless of whether it was Muslim or non-Muslim. Very simply, there were not many Muslims around. And of course, the local Christian communities were up in arms and there were a lot of press criticism, even then, nothing new, I suppose. Those are the key challenges. But I think more importantly, the biggest challenge they faced was to keep up with their faith, practice it. They were quite bold in sharing it with others, so I don't think they were very shy about it. So those were the challenges. He was very brave and he threw all convention to the wind and he just sort of did his own thing. He was certainly uh, his own person and he just didn't care. I mean, he was criticised and they used to throw stones at him. He didn't bat an eyelid. He just carried on with what he personally believed in and wanted and that was that. Abdullah Quillam is what we could call a pioneer for the whole world and for many, many Muslims and has an, an astonishing legacy that he left behind. He came from a, um, a Methodist background and he was also uh, one of the uh, legal eagles in the city as well. And um, for him to m move away from that and come into Islam um, must have been 
uh, must have affected his social life and his also social standing. Particularly after he converted to Islam, he did a lot of work in the community to support children. He founded an orphanage in Liverpool, also schools and uh, an institute of learning. He was a person who believed uh, what, his, what he felt strongly about. And in, in 1889, he strongly felt about his belief as a Muslim uh, to introduce Islam in, in, the, in, the, in England. And in those days, of course, Liverpool being a port and a very busy port, one of the busiest ports, the ships used to come in with the last cars on them. All the, all the crew of these boats coming into Liverpool were mostly Muslims, and they used to get off the boat and go flat on their faces on the pier head, facing Mecca and praying. And my, that started my grandfather off because he saw this happening and he thought, that's absolutely appalling. They've got no official place where they can worship. They're doing it in the street because there's nowhere they can go. That's when he built the mosque. He built the mosque and he used to call them to prayer in Arabic from the, from the minaret in, at the Liverpool mosque. Mm -hmm. As soon as the boats used to come into harbour, they'd just go to the mosque when it was built. And it is at Eid Braham Terrace that Abdullah Quilliam established the first independent mosque in the UK. Currently the building is in an abandoned state, but we are joined by Dr. Muhammad Akbar Ali, the chairman of the Abdullah Quilliam Society, who will be taking us a tour of the building and showing us the potential for restoration of the building. So let's take a look inside. So this is the main entrance of the building. It was the main entrance to the mosque, mm -hmm. although the entrance is over there at the back. But this had an archway with a crescent and a star, which probably you'll see in the magazines, photographs that were taken at that time. Unfortunately, a lot of it has been removed from here now, but that was the main entrance to the prayer hall. So you mentioned um, Abdullah Quilliam being a solicitor and his involvement in many publishing works. So let's go and find out where he conducted these publishing. Right, certainly. So Abdullah Quilliam as a solicitor, um, that was his profession. But what were some of his other literary accomplishments? Well, yes, he was very fond of writing and also of making speeches because that was one of his ways of convincing people of the truth he had discovered himself. And of course, one of the publications, main publication was um, The Crescent. In Amel, we decided to take The Crescent's newsletters. The, the, the Crescent was Abdullah Quilliam's newsletters that he produced um, that were a record of his time. And we decided to reproduce articles from them every month in Amel that was from a month, the same month. So if it was January 18, whatever, we would produce it January in, in now 2008. And we decided to do this so, because it was a great reflection of British Islam going back almost 200 years ago. And it's this fantastic um, insight, window if you like, onto this, this community that was very engaged with its local community. We wanted to show um, what that community was like before really the war, the First World War, completely tore that community asunder and it was never seen again really. As you know, Abdullah Quilliam was a very, very charismatic figure. And in 1908, he had to go to Turkey because he had very close relationship with the Sultan of Turkey. And I think it was mainly political reasons why he had to go there. And he spent quite some time, a number of years, away from the base, which was here in Liverpool. During that period, unfortunately, a lot of people who had become Muslims under his influence and who were still remain Muslims because of him, they gradually left the community and dispersed throughout England. But fortunately, a lot of them went to Woking, which was the other contemporary mosque in England at that time, and they settled there. And when Abdullah William returned from Turkey after a long period, he found that his, the community he had established has disappeared and uh, he found that they, most of them had gone to Woking. So he also joined them in Woking. The center of Islam, which was established in Liverpool, shifted its center to the south of England in Woking. Why is it important this, that this center is restored? Well, what can we do to help? It is so important because it is the legacy of a genuinely indigenous 
British Muslim. Mm -hmm. And since we have decided to stay in this country, it is our duty to hold up that heritage and, uh, and maintain it as much as, as far as we can. And that is why we are striving very hard to get some funding so that we can restore the reputation of Liverpool as a capital of culture, which is now this year, 2008. And we would like to see that uh, Islam is revived in this area and that we re-establish the centre which was established by, by Abdullah Quilliam in, in the 1898s. To celebrate the pioneering work of Sheikh Abdullah, a small group of Liverpool Muslims in 1998 formed the Abdullah Quilliam Society. The Abdullah Quilliam Society aims to raise financial support to refurbish the premises and return it to being a centre of Islamic excellence, as it was 100 years ago, and to take it into the 21st century as the Abdullah Quilliam Heritage Centre. I think the Quilliam Society is a great idea, um, even though I'm not a Muslim myself, but um, to Muslims, local Muslims, which look at more and more, um, it must be a great um, society for them to come to and get help and uh, advice. I think it's always important to realise the history behind 8 Brome Terrace and what the Abdullah Quilliam Society want to achieve, not only for the Muslim community in Liverpool and the North West region, but also to break down the barriers that exist in lots of societies now with intolerance. So I think it's a wonderful way forward to teach the Islamic faith to the people of the city, whatever gender, whatever religion, or whatever race they come from. This is the first mosque that I know of which was truly British and started here. And being a Muslim, it particularly interested me. It was an interesting building also because it's a listed building built in 1830s something like 175 years ago and more than a hundred years ago uh, Abdullah Quilliam when he took over this building he made an interesting change and brought it a new brought in new features to this building uh, as an architect I'm obviously keen and interested to see how this can be developed further we actually say you know we're working on the first mosque that was in England and everything is hard shall we say uh, full and utter discussion. The mix of the cement had to be what was done in the late 20th century. The stainless steel gutters have got to look like lead. All the pipe work has got to look authentic as we can, but with modern materials. And that's the challenge. It is really a great honour and a privilege to be involved um, with the first mosque in England, which was set up by an Englishman on an English soil 120 years ago. So the very involvement is very historic and that is really something uh, 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 very unique to me. First of all, we'd like to restore the first mosque in England as it was 120 years ago and also to have a state-of-the-art and Islamic museum, unique again in the European soil, and also uh, to use the centre for interfaith dialogues and community cohesion, uh, a place for learning for all communities. Um, also, we will have an Islamic garden and also a prayer, a further prayer room as a mosque um, built with the modern design um, and the backyard. Abdullah Quilliam Foundation, established only a few months ago, has a different agenda, a completely different program, whereas we have been established for nearly 10 years and we have been working very quietly to establish a center which will be called the Abdullah Quilliam Heritage Centre and that is one of our main objectives. This is an incredibly important project for not just the whole British Muslim community but for the global Muslim community to actually see and have forever, if you like, professionally archived his words, his actions and what, and what he did in this community which was dynamic and vibrant and committed to a British Islam. So that's an Islam which is authentically Islamic and, and, and true to the, to the faith and to the deen also authentically British. I think as we build through the safer, stronger communities and have real community cohesion, it's important that everybody is able to access all community centres like the Abdullah Quillam Society will establish in Brome Terrace. And I think it's important the educational aspect, 
It's important that it is an office space, a workspace for people to work in. It's important that it's a museum of history so people can see where Abdul Quillam came from, what he did and what he actually achieved for all the people of Liverpool as we work towards a very tolerant society. I was really honoured when I was asked to become patron of the Abdullah Quilliam Society and especially the refurbishing of the Islamic prayer room and the turning of it into the Islamic Heritage Centre in Liverpool. Uh, and for two reasons I decided to do it. Firstly, um, Jesus told us that uh, there were two commandments in the end, to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbour as yourself. And uh, if I was to say, well, who is my neighbour? then in Liverpool, the Muslim community is my neighbour. The Muslim community is the neighbour to the Christian community. And how do I show that love for my neighbour? It seemed to me that one of the ways I could do that was to help in the refurbishment of the Abdullah Quilliam Centre. At the moment, we are restoring the roof of the building, which is costing us £150,000. We urgently need that. And also, to, in total, it will cost us around two and a half million pounds for the full refurbishment. Of course, as far as the fabric of the building is concerned, it's very sound. And perhaps it will take less than a million pounds to restore it, make it habitable. But that is not the idea. It's, we are not going to let out rooms here. We want to establish it as a cultural centre, a propagation centre, a centre of excellence from which we can propagate, from which we can invite people, invite all people, as the Quran says, to the way, invite all to the way of thy Lord, mm -hmm. with beautiful preaching. And, and the response from the Muslim community, I mean, in regards to funding, I mean, how have you found... Unfortunately, and it's very sad to reflect, that the Muslim community seems to be in a deep slumber. Nothing seems to excite them. And as I said, this is the only heritage which has been left to us, the only legacy. And we are unable to raise funds to refurbish it. All we need is a bit of money. So we have appealed to the sheikhs in the Middle East. We have appealed to the rich people in this country. But so far, we have had no response. And we are hoping that through this channel that we are working on and I hope people will feel that it, it is their duty to uphold this heritage that has been left to us, this legacy, and do all they can to help us to raise the necessary funds so that we can restore this place to its former glory and make it again a centre of excellence, a centre for the propagation of Islam and Islamic ideals. So my plea would be really is to do get involved in this project, do contribute what you can and let's retain our Islamic heritage uh, as it should be retained um, uh, for the betterment of, of uh, today and for the future. If we don't uphold our Islamic history today, what can we leave for tomorrow's generation? Abdullah Quilliam's pioneering dawah work in Liverpool and his prolific writings and lectures on Islam became well known, not only in England, but across the world. In fact, we can exclusively reveal that Abdullah Quilliam played a crucial role in introducing Islam to Japan. We came to know the first Japanese Muslim, Abdul Halim Noda, who happened in, 19, in 1891, went to Istanbul uh, during the Ottoman period. And there he met Abdullah Quilliam, who was coming to visit uh, Istanbul and after a dialogue uh, Noda accepted Al Islam and declared his faith in this. And since then I become interested also in Abdullah Gulyam because he, through him the first Japanese become Muslim. I trust the story of Abdullah Gulyam. I also search for the first American Muslim, okay. Alexander Webb, who was uh, ambassador of US to Philippines and become Muslim. He resigned and he established a South Islamic center in New York and there was a strong relation between Abdullah Gilliam and Alexander Webb. Abdullah Quilliam's legacy lives on and Western Muslims, particularly reverts to Islam, see him as a forefather of the path they have undertaken.
he did an awful lot of good for people in Liverpool and people generally in England, you know, and I think that uh, there should be more people like him that are prepared to give themselves to the community and to their country and to whatever, to improve them. And he always wanted to improve things. And as a revert myself, I always say that in my journey to Islam, I didn't need to change to become Muslim. Actually, I, I adopted a faith that I felt was right and was right for me. In a similar way, Quilliam was able to establish a community in Liverpool, a Muslim community in Liverpool, based on sort of British traditions. And I think that's a really important lesson, actually, that applies to British Islam today. He was a stakeholder in his community as a Briton and as a Muslim. For me, um, it takes a lot of character and um, compassion and conviction to have stood out at that period um, when Islam was something strange and especially for the white man embracing Islam. So for me, uh, I definitely a shining star. He was inspiring at that time from his background, wealthy background, being a solicitor. He had the best in life, but he chose actually to work towards his society. And I think it's a very important piece of advice for all of us. You see, his fame is not in establishing great buildings and uh, magnificent mosques with domes and minarets, but in establishing a Muslim community from almost nothing, a blank sheet of paper, and he built up a community of nearly 150 people, faithful people, who clung to their faith through thick and thin. He did so much for people that I think he should be recognised today because he was a very special person. I mean, you know, he stepped out of line, but he stepped out of line in order to give, you know, to, to, to provide something that was worth having. Abdullah Quilliam passed away in 1932 and is buried in Brookwood Cemetery near Woking. The legacy that Abdullah has left behind still remains alive with us today, as the Abdullah Quilliam Society are dedicated to continuing his work by restoring the historical mosque coinciding with Liverpool's declaration as the European capital of culture in 2008. A fitting Muslim contribution to the cultural life and aspiration of the city of Abdullah Quilliam's birth. Well, we've come to the end of this week's episode of Discover. I hope you have found that Abdullah Quilliam is proof of the historic positive contribution that Muslims have made in the past and how we, as the youth of today, can continue this good work in the future. If you'd like more information about the centre, please email us at hayat at islamchannel.tv. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Discover with me, Soraya. This week we are in Liverpool where we'll be taking you back in time to the Victorian period where we'll be discovering one of Britain's first mosques established by Abdullah Quilliam. and very brave.